Greetings, everyone. This is Terra Illumination. This is going to look really weird, but I felt it's appropriate in the situation. I just want to stay very, very mellow. I'm totally blacked out here uh, because of the heat and the sun outside. I'm even keeping light bulbs off and so on as much as possible. Anyway, also, I, I'm going to load this up as soon as I can. And this is Wednesday, the 13th, I believe. It's the full moon. Sun is in Cancer. And the moon is over in Capricorn. It just flipped past like whatever is 21, 22 degrees or something. And in a few hours, the moon is going to be conjoined with Pluto. So this is very, very let's say on point for the United States. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the, the stuff that I like to talk about that I don't really talk about much anymore is kind of taboo on uh, this platform. On the other hand, it's starting to leak out so much on so many other channels, including sometimes the mainstream media, that it's going to be very, very hard to stop or censor everything that is starting to come out. The way I see it is that the folks who have their agenda uh, that they wish to impose on planet Earth are becoming highly visible, okay? Because they normally operate in the shadows very much like this. And they do all their manipulations and pulling of strings and managing of governments and politicians and leaders and banks all across the world behind a secret veil. I'm going to do something in a minute. Uh, I, it'll make it a little more light and fun and cheerful. I don't want to spread doom and gloom, even though essentially we're talking of this, about this thing called W W. Three, okay, because it's basically upon us, and it's going to be a big, long, slow grind. It's going to affect everybody on Earth. There's no way out of it, and it's just—it's perfectly normal, perfectly appropriate. This is what human beings do. They go through these cycles. I mean, it's silly, really. Uh, we don't have to, but we do. We can't help ourselves. Anyway, because of the Capricorn cancer axis right on the cancer capricorn axis of the birth of the united states i think this is extra important um, what i meant by everything becoming exposed is that there are so many bizarre events that are happening all across the world that can only be explained as happening on purpose. And that's very scary and very disturbing when you think about it. The, the, the list, there's a long list, uh, especially in, in a very, 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 very recently, uh, Neil McCoy Ward, for example, did a really good video on this stuff uh, yesterday. And I kept thinking, wow, he's basically uh, um, touching on all the things that I'm trying to deal with, but he comes at it from a, a very, let's say, professional economic, like a uh, newscaster perspective. Uh, I'm just going to rattle off a few things. All the major floods in China, all the major bank runs in China for hundreds, tens of millions of people can't get their money out of their banks. Uh, millions and millions of people, homeless, families, farms, uh, economies, cities destroyed because of the floods. The uh, huge astronomical monsoons in India and Bangladesh, okay? Uh, we just had a major uh, earthquake in New Zealand. Uh, Mount uh, uh, Lake Taupo is also starting to rumble in New Zealand. It's one of the most, let's say, potentially scary volcanoes on earth, but it's very somber, at least for now. I'm trying to move across the globe. 
all the, let's say, extreme violent hyper revolutions that are happening now and protests all across the world, uh, especially the poorer the country, the more, well, not always so, because the Netherlands, as you know, is rioting against the, uh, the food agenda and the, the net zero carbon agenda. Anyway, as I predicted weeks and weeks ago, when Mars starts to hard square with Pluto, Mars would be in Aries, that is the warrior sign, the warrior planet at full maximum expression, coming out of 15 degrees, heading towards 27 degrees, and Pluto parked at around 27 degrees. We've just already crossed that point. And we've just seen a massive explosion, increase of violence all across the world for whatever reason, financial violence, physical violence, guns, mass shootings. In the United States, a lot of it, I feel, is a disgusting thing to even consider, but staged, manufactured, uh, where uh, some very, very dark entities exploit the fragilities of mostly young males who don't have a proper father figure, and they turn them into weapons. They turn these children into weapons. And it's to further the agenda of uh, taking the guns away from American citizens. It's, it's a plan. And it, it, you can see it unfolding on the news. It's literally just like watching a screenplay or reading a screenplay uh, for a, a really sick movie. And so, uh, it's not working very well for the folks who want to take away the guns from America. You've probably noticed. In fact, it's backfired really badly. badly. That's a joke, by the way, backfired. <laughs> so uh, Americans still have their guns if you want them, okay? It's not going to go away. But the resistance is going to increase dramatically from the folks who want to take away your guns. So please allow for that. Uh, last 10 days or so, six Russian oligarchs, all very tight with uh, Vladimir uh, Putin, uh, all suddenly mysteriously died by hanging in their mansions. Hmm, wonder what's going on there. Yeah, all sorts of weird political things happening in uh, across the world. Uh, Sri Lanka uh, basically imploding as a country. Uh, Sri Lanka being one of the major test cases for the World Economic Forum Agenda 2030 program starting, you know, uh, whatever, two, three, five years ago. And that backfired very badly. The other thing that backfired with extreme uh, angry protests, it's not hyper violent, but the uh, farmer protests in the Netherlands, basically, you know, they burned down the Bill Gates uh, New World Order food hub. And uh, they stopped, you know, basically farming production. So in other words, <laughs> It's like the whole uh, carbon net zero agenda and the, the uh, uh, you know, uh, global climate change agenda uh, and all the agenda 2030, you have to have carbon, you know, you're not allowed to breathe basically or fart or poop or anything and all animals that are used for food have to uh, uh, be killed off and everyone's going to start eating uh, veggie burgers and so on. That's the plan, and everybody knows it now, and it's very disturbing and very sick. The other thing, of course, is all the financial warfare. As you know, I talk about that quite a lot. And coming out from especially uh, the very, very tip of the pyramid of uh, the financial uh, basically machine is the United States Federal Reserve linked up with the United States Treasury and the United States federal government, and they answer to the entities above them where all the money is, you know, the Black Rocks, the Vanguards, the Fidelities, the Berkshire Hathaways, the State Streets, and all the other big, big global conglomerates and everything, all the global media. Anyway, it's all kind of like escalating. You probably all, this, all know about the huge floods in uh, uh, Australia too, and it, it looks it's so bizarre. It's hard not to think it's manufactured and testing grounds for uh, 
how to control the people. Then, of course, there's the big, big story that's been dragging on for two years, and they're still trying to drag it on in order to basically take full command and control of every single human being on Earth as part of uh, the fourth industrial revolution, which is basically to chip everybody so that they can be controlled by a single centralized financial machine. Basically, since money is like blood in our bloodstreams, uh, it can be controlled by a, a basically a technocracy that rules everything from the very, 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 very tippity, tippity, tippity top of the pyramid of power, money, and control. And it's literally like turning the whole of planet Earth and all the human beings into uh, what they do on factory farming for cows, pigs, and chickens, and turkeys, and uh, seafood. And that's the plan. That's their plan. And in order for that plan to manifest, they have to make it more and more manifest. And so as it becomes more and more manifest, more and more people are starting to realize it and see it and realize, oh my God, what the bleep is happening on planet Earth? So you start to look at the wars like in the middle, middle of Europe, Europe with that country beginning with UK name U-K-R-A-I-N-E and between R-U-S-S-I-A and all of that stuff. And uh, the global, uh, the chaotic meltdown over in England with their po politicians, all the chaotic, chaos in Europe uh, regarding uh, weapons and defense. Uh, as the war escalates and expands. And then, of course, you take it all the way across the Pacific, massive buildup in uh, China, all across Southeast Asia, and so on. You have a recipe which is already unfolding like a massive, massive weed uh, for something called WW3. And it's actually happening now. And it's going to engulf the whole of planet Earth. In America, we're probably going to be some of the last people to feel it here because we got a lot of our soldiers and military in outposts all across the world. I'll show you in a minute. I'm gonna try and do a demonstration that'll be more luminous. How about that? Let's see, maybe I should just go to that right now. Let's see if I can do this. Let me go to a share screen. As you can tell, this is a completely different way of producing things. No, I'm not quite ready yet. I've got to do a couple of adjustments and then um, we can <clears throat> go to what I'm trying to talk about over here. Oh, that's a good start. Uh, we can follow with that one, follow with that one. Yeah, follow with that one. I'm just checking my charts, okay? It's beautiful stuff here. You, it's, it's just amazing. And I'm going to leave that for I might, I might, might, might not. I might do a, an Astro Doodle. Let me think about that. I think I'll just do a single Astro Doodle about the full moon and leave it at that. Um, anyway, I'm going to go over here to start things, to start gently and bring a little bit of light on the subject. So let me go to my Zoom over here. You've probably seen me in the background there. Okay, now. I'm not going to do this. I got to go over to the others. I got to go over to the stage here. All right, there we go. All right, um, let's see. How are we going to do that? Oh, yeah. Little, we have to have a bit of light, but so you can see I've been busy making some of my notes. You might think I'm an absolute nutcase. Look at these. These were gifted to me. I haven't found yet the best way to put them out, but they're basically built for car stickers and the fed here's a big one and the fed and here's one in white i think that's going to look really cool got to put it on a car let me put those aside uh here's the i, I refer to this frequently as you know i've got a whole pile of notes in here i'm just going to pull them out for now here's the ephemeris for july as you can see we are sort of roughly in the middle over here at the full moon is the camera going to pick it up Sort of. Hmm. Oh, almost. Oh. And it's a bit tricky because of the, I, I don't know why. Anyway, you can't see it very clearly. But anyway, we're around here, the 13th. It's about, uh, it's a full moon. 
and I'm going to illustrate this very crudely in a few minutes. I started making some notes. There's this fellow I admire on YouTube. His name's Neil McCoy Ward. He's so, so professional. I love the way he does these things. He's, he's very British. Yeah, I think he was, he was in the military, I believe, for like 15 or 20 years. And he has this classic British demeanor and everything. I mean, he has everything laid out kind of like if you, if you knew me personally and you saw how I do things, you would see that typically when I'm at my best, I have my pins lined up perfectly and everything is at the right angle. Everything's, everything, everything in its place and a place for everything. I'm one of those types of people. But anyway, he types everything out and he uses highlighters and he reads from his own script that he creates, puts a lot of time and work into his shows and it shows. Ha 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 ha, that was another joke. Ooh, amazing, I'm so good at this. Okay, so here we go. This is my attempt to make a super condensation. I'll get to, I'll get to that thing in a minute about what I see going on here. I wanted to touch on a couple of things. Where's the first note here? See, this was my one of my first notes here. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can sort of. I made this when I was in McDonald's having my uh, coffee. Damn, I wish you could see it more clearly. But anyway, it's, try, it's my way to try and illustrate uh, what's happening, how, how and why the everything is sort of pivoting around the United States at the moment. And a lot of it, I think, is because we are living through our Pluto return. And it's unavoidable, especially since the United States has the reserve currency for the whole of planet Earth. You know, and everything spins around money. Money is the root of all blah, blah, blah. Okay, um, so the way I looked at it, the United States is really kind of stretched. And that's why they've been printing so much money and they're gonna keep doing it because we're looking at war everywhere. Right now, of course, everything's focused on R-U-S-S-I-A and U-K-R-A-I-N-E. And that's this big NATO operation of which the United States is very, very big part of this. And that's basically all the Western European countries that are trying to protect themselves as a team against these folks here. Okay, so this is, this is a very dirty, dirty, bloody, ugly war of siege. It's just a continuous pounding. It's a slaughter. It's just like a th thugs going against folks who are more or less innocent in relative terms. And the thugs keep bashing and bashing and bashing and because no one's actually stopping them, not in the way that they need to be stopped. While the NATO folks are basically talking about, oh, we need to stop this. Oh, we need to stop this. The trouble is that they, it's difficult because NATO is totally dependent on Russia. <laughs> oh my God, I mean, how, how absurd does it get? Next over here, this is where Uncle Joe is here today right now over in the Middle East because he's trying to smooth things out because it's extremely volatile over there, as you know, all over the Middle East. But the big issue right now is Israel, which is a strong uh, like brother sister of the United States in its own weird way. And their concern is Iran, you know, nuclear, 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 nuclear. Oh, no, no. And then over here, way up in the northwest corner, you've got North Korea, bordered on South Korea. The military buildups in these areas are just staggering. And there, there's Kim Il-jong over there. And with all his nukes, he keeps popping off, off like a, a crazy uh, neighborhood kid with a load of firecrackers and he just can't help himself. He just loves setting off these firecrackers to scare people. Uh, and it gets off on that stuff. And then, of course, we have these folks. You know about them. It's still, I'm, I'm sad that it's so blurry. Oh, come on, camera. Anyway, so there's the big thing with China, Taiwan, and the whole of the South uh, uh, Asia Pacific stuff. So let me put this on a map. You know, I like my maps. 
just you wait a minute. I got some more maps for you, folks. So this is it. This is uh, this is the one, the first one I talked about. Okay, here's the second one I talked about. Here's the third one I talked about, and here's the fourth one I talked about. And you add those four together. Effectively, the United States is in the middle of all of it, and it sucks every other country into it. And the way the United States is dealing with it all right now is, oh, God damn, we got to make more guns, more bullets. We got to print more money to buy all that stuff. So just print, print, print. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, we've printed too much. We have to start slowing down the printing. Uh, we've created inflation. Oh, my God, we did too much. We have to raise interest rates. And that's sending the world into chaos. Just from here, just those folks right there, they're sitting there in their funny little suits. That's Jerome Powell, Janet Yellen, and Uncle Joe, and a handful of others. They're, they're at the epicenter of this whole thing. They just push the levers and press the buttons. Interest rates up uh, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, now they're up. Anyway, the inflation stories are all over the news, even the mainstream media. They can't help it. Okay. And it is affecting everybody. Of course, as you know, there's Sri Lanka over here. It's completely imploding. And now, just like a bunch of firecrackers, it's imploding all over here, 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 and bits of here. Okay. And I told you this many times before on other shows where I was behaving quite differently. But anyway, so the whole of planet Earth right now is a huge tinderbox and it's already ignited Mars conjoined Pluto. OK, that happened. What was it? Uh, two weeks ago, 10 days ago. The next big one that we got coming up and I've told you about this one is August 1st give or take a few days, okay? That is when Mars conjoins Uranus, okay? Everything that we've just talked about is gonna go <laughs> like a random <laughs> up, 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 especially in the financial markets, okay? And that's gonna have effectively like it's like literally like cluster bombs going off all over planet Earth. Not only that, it's going to be physical as well. I really want to talk about that in, in a minute, but I, I'm not quite there. I'm ex really excited about that because I haven't seen anyone else talk about it except me. So um, let's put that aside. Thanks, Love Triber, for encouraging me. So I put... Uh, Let's see, I had it. Okay, so that's the notes that I just described up here. The United States and Europe are at the epicenter of this quadrant of war. They can't get out of it, okay? I hope this diagram simplifies what I'm trying to describe, okay? Should I make a video about it? Yes, I did. It was interesting. To all, you know, six oligarchs died simultaneously. UK government, Boris collapses, implodes, uh, the Netherlands farmers, revolution, protest, floods across nations, the Georgia Guidestones exploding, more and more shootings. Check Mars long-term, yeah. There's gonna be another more issues once uh, Mars moves past Uranus, okay? Let me put this, uh, let me put some notes. You know, should I go to this one first? Yeah, uh-huh. I kind of already did this one. Uh, oh, you know what? That's what I want to mention. A couple of bits of pushback. It's been very interesting for me because, as you know, I've kind of leaned towards being uh, a supporter of the Constitution in America. Some people would call me a patriot or a uh, domestic terrorist Ooh, or you know, something like that. Basically, a conservative type. Even though I am, I have a lot of quirks about my nature that you would call extremely left wing. So you know, you could say I'm sort of in the middle. Uh, anyway, so I basically talked about this already on, on Sunday. I made a very very brief 
a reference to all of this. And I just talked about it at the beginning of this video. One thing that makes me very fuzzy and warm and happy inside is that the Second Amendment rights have been secured for decades, preferably a centuries to come. In other words, the American citizens, us folks over here, unlike anywhere else in the world, we have it enshrined in our constitution that we have the right to own and bear arms in order to protect ourselves and our loved ones and our families and our property against enemies, both foreign and domestic. And frankly, the biggest enemy is sitting right here. Uh, he's the face of the enemy as far as I'm concerned, but actually he's uh, buzzing around in his uh, stolen jet over here right now. And let me get back to my notes. Flooding along with the world, China, Bangladesh, yeah. Government calling it Russian. Okay. okay. Uh, let me put, let me get to this. This is kind of what I wanted to show you. This was what I was making earlier, trying to get prepped up to show you. I hope it kind of illustrates things. I just want to name a bunch of stuff that I've named many times already. Okay. Some of them you know very well. Uh, here's the World Economic Forum. That's Klaus Schwab and his crew. Here's the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, that uh, is basically owned and operated by America. Here's the World Health Organization, which is sort of part of the United Nations, uh, which is sort of part of the World Bank, which is sort of part of the Euro Euro European Union. And uh, they all sort of crowd together uh, as this cluster added with these guys here, this is the United States Federal Reserve banking system, the United States Treasury that feeds off the Fed, and the U.S. government that does the work uh, according to the orders of the Fed and the Treasury, which is uh, their notes are fed to them from these folks here. And here are the owners. These are, this is where all the money is stashed, uh, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, Streer, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, and tons of others. In the, these are we're talking about tens of trillions of dollars. Okay, over here, owned and managed by these people, especially this folks, uh, because he owns and operates this thing called Aladdin, which is the big supercomputer trader for the whole of planet Earth, for the whole of the uh, stocks, bonds, commodities across Earth. Now, you add this and this and this together pump that into here. You add all this together. These are the global multinationals. You know, the Nestle's, the uh, Pfizer's, the, uh, I don't know, Kellogg's, the, uh, you know, military industrial complex in America. Uh, you can add in these like legendary mythological creatures like the Vatican and the monarchies. You can add in the mainstream media and like in the United States, we have these, but it's the same stuff all across the world, but different anchors, different languages. We have ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can add in the big boys in US tech like uh, Google, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, um, a ton of others, and they're all there. They all s support that kind of basically like this radical uh, totalitarian agenda. Uh, in the United States, we also have this thing called the Democratic Party, which is kind of the front, the front line, the front line forces that's trying to push all this stuff forward here in America and then from there to the rest of the world. Uh, and all of that in the last 30 years has been dominated by the top US crime families with these particular names you might recognize here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. It's just like watching some very old fashioned like um, mafia movie or something. How are we gonna get done what we have to do? Because we gotta get done what we gotta do. All these folks, they live, you remember I, I talked about that big pyramid of power, okay? All they want at the very, very tippity top, all they care about is money, power, and control. They want more and more and more and more because their motto is, he who has the most when he dies wins. And it's all, 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 all squished into here in, in this big fuzzy like uh, organism. 
the old terminology was new world order, one world government. The buzzwords today are agenda 2030 and uh, carbon net zero and the carbon uh, agenda, the decarbonization agenda. And that's uh, sort of like a combination that's there. All of these folks, they're trying to min mimic what, what China does already to its own people, which is complete uh, command and control uh, the Chinese poor people, the poor people of China, not the poor people, the citizens of China have really no say or control at all because the CCP is literally uh, the dream fantasy of these folks over here. They want to do and be, they all want to do and be what these guys do already. China is the supermodel, uh, centerfold, uh, uh, wannabe, wish, uh, dream, uh, character, poster child for global, globalized totalitarianism. These folks want it even more than these folks want it. So there's a sort of weird war going on there. And the way they're going to do it, their, their idea, of course, is uh, the crisis. They have to destroy everything that is good and what works and uh, rebuild it according to their agenda. And that's why we're seeing so much pulverization and destruction of so many things that we know and love, like farms, money, travel, freedom, security, self-defense, fun family, the ability to save and prosper and grow as opposed to being farmed. Remember, the way these folks operate and the way these folks operate, they look at this place as a farm and they are farming humanity, okay? It's that simple, okay? I'm just trying to explain it in a visual way. And this is my attempt to do what these people I'm gonna show you in a minute, they do it extremely well much better than I can. <clears throat> Let me go over here for a second. You know what, I'm just gonna move past that for a moment. I'm gonna go straight on to the visuals that I wanted to share with you. Let me see if I can do this now from this position. Um, <clears throat> yes, here we go. All right, here we go, let's try this. All right, so here's a place called Visual Capitalist. I like here, I've been playing here for a while. There's tons of amazing places out there and you can use this. They tell you on the site, you can use this stuff. So I'm using it, okay? Uh, they do maps for all sorts of things. And I love maps, as you know. So I kind of cherry picked a few. Let me have a look at this one. Uh, let's global human, no, I wanna look at, there's one called, hold on, I want to start with something fun. Here it is. Uh, I hope you guys can see this. It should be recording properly. Let's see if I can enlarge it. That's pretty big. Yeah, that actually, let's work. I can scroll here. The most and least happy countries around the world. Smiley faces. Everybody can understand this. I love the colors and the numbers and everything. It's beautiful. Look at this. Okay. There's a scale here. The higher the score, the more happy. The lower the score, the less happy. So the bright orange and yellows are happy, happy, happy. So look over here, Australians, New Zealanders, Kiwis, they're pretty happy folks. And I would agree. I know some of them. Most Americans are pretty happy in their own way. I mean, there's a lot of deranged characters here, but uh, compared to a lot of folks, we're pretty happy. Same over here, Canada. Northern Europe, you would expect that. Norway, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, and so on. Let's see if I can get it bigger. Nope, I can't. Nope. Anyway, I understand that because I used to live over here. I've traveled all over here. Uh, I've, uh, I, was I was conceived and almost born over here, but my mom rushed back over to have me over here. And then we moved and lived over here. So I've kind of been around the block, traveled all over here. 
but uh, I lived here for a while and now I'm living, I was living over here for years, but now I'm over here. This little blob, can you see it? That's Las Vegas. So that's where I'm broadcasting from right now. So I'm in, I'm in a pretty happy place, but you can see there's a lot of pain, okay? A lot of pain and it's where you would expect it, okay? Everywhere that you have totalitarianism, especially when you have totalitarianism and poverty here. This is because of extreme conditions with poverty, okay? India, <sighs> India is about what? A third of the size of the United States and they have 1.4, 1.5 billion people. Okay, no wonder they're frustrated, pissed off. Look, they're down in the deep purple color here. Same thing with a lot of these parts of Africa. There's a lot of tragedy right down here that you can't even go there to measure it. It's so dangerous, okay? Over here, a lot of misery, okay? Deep, deep, deep misery. A lot of pain over here. The numbers are low, bad, okay? But... Anyone who's watching this video and you live somewhere around here or here or here, chances are you're feeling a little bit better than everywhere else, okay? Now, let me see. Let's have a look at the state of democracy across the world. Look at this. See if I can blow this up. Democracy is this whole idea of one hand, one vote. There are places that have true full democracies and there's the stuff in the middle and then there's the complete uh, authoritarian, totalitarian. And then there's the extremes on either side. Okay, so let's see if I can blow this up. Oh yeah, Woo -hoo. All right, so full, full, full democracies. It's what you would expect. Norway, Finland, Sweden, New Zealand, and actually Denmark, Ireland, okay? Now, let's go all the way to the other extreme. This is like hyper authoritarian. These basically be people, uh, if you don't like what I say, I shoot you, I kill you, okay? That's it, it's, that's how it works in these places. Afghanistan, Myanmar, which is Burma, which is over here. Afghanistan is over here. Uh, North Korea is over here. Democratic Republic of Congo is over here. My dad used to have to do business over there. Very scary place at times, but also very beautiful. Syria over here tucked in here, where is it? Over here, right, okay. So these are hyper extreme totalitarian regimes. Brutal, absolutely rule by, ruled by thugs and guns, even theocracy, okay? Now it gets a little bit more blurred over here. China is a major abuser of their power, of course. And we've talked about that many, many times. And let's look at the color coding again, hold on. Now, we are kind of flawed, okay? If you look over here with the color coding, America is really shredding right now. It's coming apart, it's coming unglued. Same with Western Europe. They are heavily compromised, just like the United States is heavily compromised. Now, when you say democracy, that's not quite the same as what we have in America, which is a constitutional republic. The beauty of having a constitutional republic is that we still have a tremendous amount of, um, let's say, autonomy of the states and the people. But uh, the democracy that they enjoy in these countries, we, we don't have that. We like to pretend we do, or they like to tell us that we have that, but we really don't. These folks really, really adhere to a democracy, but they do not have constitutional republics. So it's bit of a combination. Anyway, over here, now it's interesting, India is highly democratic. They are very, very much about free speech 
and uh, the ability to vote freely, okay? Anyway, I thought I'd show you this. This is a very interesting chart, very democratic over here, over here, over here. This is where Lena from Argentina is hanging out. Okay, so that's that. Let me show you another one. Hold on, what's that one? Uh, I'll go back to that in a minute. Here's uh, about the, uh, uh, I want to go back to that in a minute. Hold on, give me a second. No, I don't need that. One. Let's go over here. Now, this is very new. This chart is very, very new. And it's about the $100 trillion uh, global GDP gross domestic product for 2022. It's, you know, it's a color chart. You know, it's like, dude, it's like a sort of like a weird astrodoodle. I mean, look at it. So, you can see why the United States is concerned about China, and you can see why China is very concerned and interested in devouring the United States. It's not going to be that easy. Let me see if I can blow this up. Whoa. Okay. Huge. All right. There's China, Asia, Japan, Taiwan. This is, this is a powder keg over here. South Korea, super, super economically capable and democratic. India, uh, what are the other? Singapore, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, and so on. Okay, so now you understand this is what I call the slave camp, okay? This is all owned and controlled by the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. And the reason they have all this money is because we sold it to them in the form of, how can I, can I make this move or how does that work? How did that happen? Uh, thanks to the crime families that I listed on my little doodles earlier, most of what's enjoyed over here by China in terms of astronomical growth and wealth is because of the espionage and the th theft, the blackmail, and the treason that's happened between United States corporations and political leaders and Wall Street for their own very, very short-term profits by exploiting the slave camp of China that is still very much about how, slave, how China is today. We wouldn't enjoy the lifestyle that we enjoy in America today without the slave camp. This is the United States debt farm and the debt farm model has been propagated all over earth it's the same model everywhere on earth now. It didn't used to be that way, but it is today. They had to be everywhere else on earth had to comply with the United States debt model uh, in order to survive under the hegemony of the United States dollar, which essentially turned itself into a weapon, especially in the last 30 years or so, 40 years or so, under those big four crime families. And so, this place here is deeply in bed with this place here, which means that this place here is deeply in bed with this place here. And yet there's a potential for massive war. You know, it's really bizarre. To me, I, when I lit, did the astrology on all of this, it looks like a very, very ugly marriage where there's a lot of violence and dirt behind the a very shiny, a beautiful facade. Those kinds of marriages do exist, okay? Everything here is in between. You could almost say this is one whole block over here. Actually, you could extend it over here because we're really tight with Saudi Arabia, not Iran, but we're really tight with Brazil, Australia, New Zealand. And look, here's Russia. Let me show you. Look, there's Russia. They have a $1.8 trillion economy. Okay, so why are we so worried? Well, it's because these folks are super hyper violent. There you go. There's New Zealand. You know, I love New Zealand. Uh, there are some troubling states over here. Here, over here, as you can see, these are some of the most advanced, let's say, democracies. Anyway, uh, you can see all this stuff yourself. You can see up there in the uh, what you call it, the, uh, what do you call that thing? The bar. 
uh, the search bar, yeah, okay. So how has the United States managed to propagate its complete global control, which means like global hegemony of the United States culture, which keeps the people at the very, very top? In other words, the list that I showed you earlier, how do they do that? Well, guess what? It's the military. Now, this is a weird chart, the way it's done. So I'll try and do it in chunks. And it's very, well, let's say, deceptive because over here in Asia, they have vast militaries, but they're not very technically advanced. It's because they have vast populations, but there's extreme poverty, okay? The Middle East populations are modest, but you can see there's very little gray and the military is extremely powerful in some of these places. A lot of it is bought from the United States. Australia and New Zealand, very, very tiny, but still very loyal to these folks here called America, which is very loyal to South America. Over here, China is being completely exploited by these folks here. Over here, these are the NATO countries which are strongly linked with America. And right now we've got about 300,000 troops that have recently been sent over to here uh, to deal with the war going on right there underneath my little marker. So let me expand this. Whoa, okay, let's go back. Oh, I can do it this way, okay. So this is a beautiful illustration. I'm just gonna scroll down, okay? This is Asia. The, 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 here's all the Ishtans, Kyrgyzstan, Takistan, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and actually over here, there's Pakistan as well. So there's a lot of military over here, hardcore military, uh, very few reserves. There's Pakistan. India, huge army. Very, very powerful, very well-equipped army. China, Enormous army, 3.4 million people plus millions of reserves. Vietnam, astronomical for such a tiny place. Small, fully armed, but a massive reserve. Okay, there's North Korea, massive military for its size. South Korea, Japan, massive military for its size. Uh, South Korea, Korea, massive military for its size. Philippines, Taiwan, a pretty decent military for its size and massive reserves. Malaysia, very well armed. The United States is tight, really, really tight today with all of this, 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 but not this. These are the enemies here, North Korea, China, okay? They constitute enemies. We've got a few rogues over here. As you know, let's scroll down. Here's the Middle East, okay, in tighter. This is very complicated. I don't, I'm not smart enough to know a lot about this, but you've heard of all of these places. It's just a continuous on, never ending war, and it's all about oil. Here is uh, the big hot spot right now. Can you see my arrow? This is the Straits of whatever, forgot. Uh, but all, uh, huge amounts of the world's oil comes and goes through these straits, very narrow straits. And China wants control of this area, okay? So they're doing a lot of belt and road stuff over here. So that's a huge, huge problem for the global oil chain, okay? Over here, Myanmar, these guys are total commies, okay? Cambodia, total commies, I think. Malaysia, I think they're more like open. Laos, very close to China. Oceania over here. Okay, here's New Zealand. Yay, go New Zealand. Here's Australia. Actually very well armed, considering there's only about 30 million people there. Now here's Europe, have a look at this. Holy jeez. Okay, heavily armed, well armed everywhere, but the people are not allowed to be well armed. It's the military that's very well armed. Here's Russia, that's a big military, not as big as China, not as big as Vietnam, still huge. And they're extremely ultra hyper-violent, 
literal thugs. They have no manners. They don't observe any kind of war. Not that there's anything to do with ethics and war, but anyway, as you can see the whole of Europe here. Now the big fight going on right now is, as you know, it's right here. And the buildup of forces is going on over here in Belarus to, to slam them. America's piling everything up in Poland and in Germany and Lithuania, big, big guns. This is a real, real danger spot over here because this is one of the only portals where Russia can take stuff in through imports. You might notice that Russia has very little in the way of access to oceans. This is all ice up here. So that's one of the reasons Russia wants this, because there's, there's so much food. This, this part of the world is so productive with food and industry, and it pisses Russia off because they want all this stuff back, because Russia used to have all of this, control all of it. But people don't like living under the Russian regime, because they're thugs. It's just criminalized thugs. Anyway, the bloodbath is over here. Somebody sent me a beautiful chart. I think it was Path Traveler. And it was a satellite image of everything that showed you where all the actual hotspots are over here. It's incredible. It's so accurate. It's mind boggling. So this is the one of the big, big tinder boxes right now. It's actually not a tinder box. This is in full flames of war, OK? And it's going to spread all over the world. Here are, here are the Balkans. These places have been at war uh, ever since humanity crossed over there like 30, 50, 150,000 years ago. It's just an eternal war. Over here, Africa, same thing, perpetual war. That's all they know. They just slaughter and kill each other nonstop. Over here, this is where I was conceived over here. We lived here for a while. It was a very different world, of course, back then. Here's the Americas. Look, we have a pretty sizable army, but it's the thing about our military is that we're extremely powerful with what we do have. And we make all this. All the really highest quality, mili quality military is made here and it's sent all over the world. It's bought from everybody across the world and everything that isn't made by us, it's stolen by others and copied by others, okay? So, you know, there you go. And these are some of our buddy. This is highly volatile territory. And uh, here's some of our buddies down here. These are our buddies, our buddies, our buddies. Tricky, poor Venezuela, it's very tragic. Argentina is really in the dumps right now too. Let's have a look. Now, I think, did we do this? I wanna show you this one. Because you know, I talk about, I kind of rabbit on, on all sorts of subjects, but look at this. This is an incredible map, human modification. If you can read this, can you see this? It says the degree of human modification measures the spatial extent and intensity of land modification by humans. In other words, wherever we have populated ourselves and done things like mining and farming and timber and reproducing and so on and so on. It's absolutely incredible. This is the most intense area of activity on Earth. They call that the something something C cup channel, or whatever. I can't remember. Sorry. Well, the, over here in Africa, it's just loaded with uh, earthly resources. That's why Africa is lighting up on the global conversation. Um, Uranus and Taurus is really making this area extremely volatile. And in fact, the whole idea of global resources is making this map light up as though it is a map of global resources. So let's see if I can go in a bit. Uh, let's try and enlarge here just for fun and move it around. Oh, wow, yeah, look at that, whoa. Okay, so as you can see in the United States, uh, most people live east of the Mississippi. Here's roughly the Mississippi and all these big lights. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we're still very lightly populated for the size of our land. And of course, Canada has 
a huge land territory. This is also America, but as you can see, this is basically raw, almost untarnished. We've done a lot of modification on the land in America. Uh, before uh, the Europeans moved over from here, of course, if they had a map back then, back in 1776, this whole thing would have just been black. Look at all the lakes in Canada. Isn't that amazing? A lot of it's frozen, of course. Let's see if I can move that around. Okay. All right. So here is Brazil. Brazil is actually has a bigger landmass than America, just a tiny bit. And this is the Amazon River Basin. And here's where uh, Brazil and uh, the other states have, other countries have manipulated the land for farming and timber, you know, basically beef and wood and so on. Uruguay, farming, okay. Uh, Colombia, drugs, 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 drugs. Over here, as you can see, sub-Saharan Africa. This whole area of the world is falling apart. This whole area of the world is, it's just turmoil. India has been farmed and populated for thousands and thousands of years, okay? That's why it looks like this. Same thing with China, okay? Uh, 1.7 billion people, 1.4 billion. I think it was this week, the whole of planet Earth reached 8 billion people population, okay? It's pretty empty over here. As you can see, New Zealand is very sparsely populated, but they've done a lot uh, with their land. It's all about farming and sheep. Actually, let me see if I can go in even tighter. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. So the big earthquake was right here. And there's uh, Taupo over here, massive uh, sleeping volcano. This is Christchurch where they had the shootings and where they had the massive earthquakes years ago. Here's Australia where they've had, they've had all the, some people think of them as manufactured fires and floods. And let's go back down over here again. Okay, uh, so this is the maritime era. This all, of course, this is heavily contaminated by uh, Chinese Belt and Road Initiative stuff. They're trying to do everything through here, 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 here. They already have a massive train line going from here to here. And of course, here's Russia. This is where all the resources are mined and the uh, oil and gas and metals and so on. And they, they pump it all over here to Europe. So you can see this part of the world here is the most, probably the most heavily modified of all. I mean, you can see it right here. It's incredible. Here's one of the places I lived. Uh, I lived about, I lived all over here, moved around a lot. England has a very, very ancient culture. It's not as old as India. This is the most densely modified piece of land right here. This is the Netherlands. This is where the big farm activity uh, and the protest is happening right now, okay? And up here, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark, they got a lot of oil and gas up here, okay? Oil and gas. Anyway, let's uh, switch that down again, get back to the original setting so I can leave this map in peace for you. There you go, it looks something like that. Okay, now, oh, we did that one. Oh, I did that one. Yes, so, how was I gonna wrap this up? So I wanna get going, I don't wanna take up the whole of your day. Oh, oh yeah, I know, I know. I was gonna go back and do the little tiny astro doodle. That's it. So let me see, what can I do if I end the share? Okay, I'm gonna to have to switch this off now. And then I, hope I, do, I hope I'm doing this right in the right sequences and so on. Uh, do, 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 uh, stop the sharing, blah, blah, blah. Oh, what happened? Oh, okay, hold on, hold on a second. Let's see. Okay, there we are. So I, I've told you about that stuff. A lot of you have heard about this from other sources now. The thing is that we've been talking about this for a long time. 
I've tried to condense everything here. I hope this little doodle makes sense to people and you can get something out of it. To me, these people are very, very, very scary. I don't want anything to do with these people. These people are frightening. They, they, they scare the poop out of me. By the way, I just learned something today from Love Triber. You can sell your poop uh, for $500 a poop. <laughs> it has to be extreme high quality poop. And they use it for bacterial re reimplantations for people who have troubles uh, in, their, in their guts. They try to repopulate their guts. Uh, these people scare me. These people scare me. These people really scare me. Okay, they really, really scare me. These people scare me. Okay, but anyway, let me go to my, see if I can do my little doodle. See if I can do what I was intending to do. Doodle, doodle, doodle. There should be a song about that. I'm not going to put anything in here except the eclipse. Sorry, it's not an eclipse. It's a full moon. Doodle. Okay. I'm just going to fill it out live, real time, like I do. Uh, and then I'm just going to get to the point as soon as I can, and then we'll wrap it up, and you can live, get on with your day. Aries, over here. Taurus, over here. Gemini, over here. Cancer, over here. Leo, and we have humble Virgo over here. Lovely Libra, secretive Scorpio. It's one of the money signs aspected right now with Taurus. And then we have Sagittarius, the great adventure. Adventurer, Capricorn, it's all about business. Business first. Aquarius, all about humanity, politics, inventions. Pisces over here. Okay, so as you know, we've got Pluto retrograde. 27 degrees right now. All right, I hope you can see that. Ugh. Saturn is over here. I think it's about 24 degrees retrograde. Neptune is over here, about 24 degrees, no, 22, I think. Um, there's Neptune. And we have um, Chiron and Aries. This is the pain of hum human beings right now, each individual. Mars uh, is already um, conjoined. I think Mars is here, I forgot. Anyway, Mars is over here in a hard square. I, I should put that in, shouldn't I? Yes, because this is where all the trouble is that I'm talking about. This is where the trouble lies. Other astrologers may laugh at me for these things, but I don't really care. Uh, here's Uranus in Taurus. Here's the North Node in Taurus. Okay, North Node, squiggle, squiggle. Uh, Venus is over here in Gemini, and I think we've got uh, Mercury over here in Cancer, and the Sun in Cancer, and the Moon is right here. It's actually already past the full moon, so I'll just put it over here, all right? Anyway, this is the thing. Today, right now, it's July, what, 13th? All right, let me put it over here, yeah. Today is, uh, actually, let me circle, like, circle this. I'll just put July, 1776. I'll put July, 2021, 22, 23, and 24, because this is a very, very slow moving uh, system. You know, if you think of this as a weather map. So this is the thing that I'm concerned about right now, because this full moon has just landed on top of the United States has build, been building up for a few weeks simultaneously as Mars moved closer and closer to a dead hard square with Pluto. Here's the status quo, trying to maintain the status quo at any cost. 
and it's meeting extreme violent resistance by status quo. I'm talking about all of these folks, okay? Now, of course, you understand there's a lot of folks who are doing extremely well in this world, financially in terms of control and power and living the good life. And they wanna keep it going, but they wanna take it even much step further. And they're meeting resistance. And because they're so close to getting what they want, they're behaving like uh, salivating, raging, uh, hungry animals. And they're trying to get more and more and more as fast as possible. You heard about Bill Gates's uh, food hub being uh, blown up over in uh, the Netherlands. And you heard about, of course, all this uh, sudden spontaneous uh, fires and explosions, especially in the United States. Uh, for all the food supplies and supply chains, especially for oil and gas, fertilizer, coal, pretty much anything you can think of to run a country. I think it's all sponsored by some of these extremely dark and creepy people. There's a few other names in here. Actually, I'm going to put a couple of other names in here. <laughs> I might as well. Why not? Actually, I better not. I'm already in enough trouble as it is. Okay. So to me, this makes me feel like this is a reminder that we're going through a kind of a repeat from back here. Because back here, in the years leading up to 1776, they were living through very similar things that we have been living through for the last 20, 30 years in the world, and especially in America. And then when it hit 4th of July, 1776, they said enough is enough. Enough is enough. We're no longer willing to put up with totalitarian, violent, murderous, bloody uh, rulership, I guess you could call it, from the British monarchy. That's it, enough. And people fought to the death to create this new thing called the United States. So here we are today, exactly one Pluto cycle later, and we're repeating history, but it's on a much bigger scale and it's affecting the whole of planet Earth. And that's why I feel that this storyline and everything that's happening in America uh, and the stories that we've been talking about here are almost identical historically to what happened in the 1700s, the early 1700s, the mid 1700s, up until 1776. And then after 1776, I think it was 1783, 87, they actually wrote the uh, constitution itself because they realized that once you have a constitutional republic, the tricky part is keeping it because it depends on having really good, wholesome, loving people who understand the true value of having a constitutional republic. And we have that, we had that, and we still have that, but it has been shrunken and demoralized and diminished to the point where it almost doesn't exist. But believe me, it does exist. There is a core element of this place called the United States that is deeply patriotic and deeply respectful and deeply values the constitutional republic that we have today. And they're not gonna let it go because we're the only place, the only people on earth that have the right to protect and defend ourselves. And that's why those folks over here, these folks are working so hard to take away the second amendment, which is our guns and the First Amendment, which is our freedom of speech, freedom of movement, rights of self-expression, and so on. In other words, look at it this way. As far as all of these folks are concerned, all of these folks are concerned, they have to make it like they, they're doing you a favor. But in reality, as far as they're really concerned, this, we the people, our enemy number one, because these are the people, especially over here, who own their own, own their guns and they're demanding free speech. Okay, but they're honorable and respectful. Uh, they act defensively. 
So they're not going to just go out there and just start shooting up everybody in Washington because they don't like them uh, because they have a bunch of guns. No, that, that's not how this works. God, guns, and gasoline. Okay. There's a, a famous fellow now. He's one of the most famous people in the world now. He has very blonde, sort of soft, uh, blonde, yellowish <laughs> hair. And he has a larger than life presence on the political stage right now. And he's uh, making a comeback. And that comeback is proving to be extremely disturbing. Hold on. Extremely disturbing for these people. Because these people represent effectively all of these people. <laughs> and this one character, this single solitary character, he's not a politician. He's basically a, a free citizen and he wants to stay that way. And he's very, very, very interested in stopping all this stuff. And he is working, uh, traveling all across this country here to uh, spread the word about the good things that we still have. He's staying happy. He's sp spreading, the, spreading the love, baby. Now, if you don't like the tone of my channel, go somewhere else, okay? I don't really care. <laughs> if you're from the other side, and you're learning something from this, good. Know thy enemy. Okay, so I think I'm just going to leave it at that. It's, this video went way longer than I was planning to do. And I'm just going to say goodbye from here. And I bless you all. It is Wednesday evening, Wednesday night, just after the full moon, uh, July 13th, 2022, United States of America. God bless you all.